For me, applying for a PhD was a long journey. There were many twists and turns. But in life, sometimes you rise and other times you have to strive. When things don't work out, it's difficult to understand or comprehend why. Why it went wrong. Why we fell short. But eventually, you finally understand that everything we go through ultimately leads us to the great things in life. You'll be grateful for all the pitfalls and losses. You'll be grateful for all the times you felt unsure or lost. For the times you waited, because one day, everything will just click and everything will just feel just right. Whatever you want in this life, go after it. It may be hard, it may be a rocky journey, but at the end of the day, that journey will totally be worth it. So keep going, give yourself time and make a plan. With that all said and done, let's talk. Woo, it's a season, not the festive season, PhD application season. So here are some tips and advice for getting the best out of yourself during this crucial period. Let's go. <laughs> do your research definitely talk to you know potential pis um, not just the pis but also their collaborators also their students make sure that you know they're easy to work with um, and that they're working in a style that works for you whether that's hands-on hands-off um, and really like making sure that they're doing the research that you want to do and will be a good pi for you not only to make sure that you choose a research topic that you would want to pursue for four years, but also that you surround yourself with the right people that you would want to spend time with and that uh, create an environment where you can succeed. I think when you're applying for a PhD, it's important to get to know the group that you want to work with as much as you can. So try to talk to people who are in the group, um, try to get a feel for whether you, you like the people there and you feel welcome and whether also the mode of working in that group might be very collaborative or very to your own. Um, very big group, very small group, these are all factors that are going to severely impact um, the way you do work every day and how much you enjoy doing your work. So I think it's very important to understand beforehand um, how does a group work and do I um, see myself working in that group for a long time. So yeah, uh, advice I give on the application is just making sure that you uh, make contact with the PI you want to uh, uh, or the group you want to join. Um, that's really the best way to increase your chances. Uh, these people receive loads of applications, often anonymously. Yeah. anonymously. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just to put your application above everyone else, just try and make contact with them, make that personal contact. So literally don't worry about anything. Um, any difficulty or hurdle you face, you will get through it. Um, and to misquote Piglet from Winnie the Pooh, you're stronger than you're, you seem and smarter than you think. Quali consigli? Avete da dare. Beh, innanzitutto trovare un progetto che ti stimoli e interessi e presentarti di persona al PI ehm, perché avere un contatto diretto con lui può aiutarti a conoscere sia il laboratorio sia meglio l'ambiente in cui poi ti troverai. Yeah. Eh, sì, concordo, mostrati determinato per quello che vuoi fare ma soprattutto consapevole della scelta che stai facendo perché un PhD non è facile, quindi sii sì, consapevole. Hello guys, welcome back to my channel on this wonderful beautiful day. I hope you guys are doing well. Um, if you're new here, my name is Samuel Dada and I'm a PhD student at the University of Cambridge in the Department of Chemistry looking at all things neurodegenerative diseases. <sighs> so this video is essentially going to be um, about me giving you the best tips and advice for essentially getting the best out of yourself um, during the PhD application. Um, obviously, a PhD is an amazing thing to embark on. It's a unique experience and obviously it gives you the opportunity of actually delving into a research area of your interest and basically being the world experts or one of the world experts within that research environment. Um, so how do you actually embark on this journey? You know, no one ever tells you about, the, you know, how do you start to actually, you know, research or looking to actually applying for a PhD. Applying for a PhD is very, very different from obviously applying for university during undergrad because you don't have to go through UCAS. At least if you're within the UK system, you don't have to go to UCAS. You can apply to as many PhDs as you want. You know, there is no limit 
um, on it. You don't have only five options. There's no limit on how many you know institutions you decide to apply. You can apply anywhere. So when you embark on this journey, I always advise people to first of all, you know, have a look on findabhp.com. This is an amazing, useful website because it gives you access to all the projects available within different institutions, which you can filter in. Um, you can also look at all the funding opportunities available as well. So if you have a particular institution that you really, really want to go to, you can look at, you know, what's actually available. And is something that I'm interested in available already within that institution? And is there even funding? And is there funding for maybe you know, international students or UK only students. So you get access to all that information. So findthepg.com is such a useful website to use when you're actually embarking on this whole process. So I'll definitely advise you to go on findthepg.com and have a look at what's already available. The second tip for you guys is to essentially maybe send an email or reach out to a potential supervisor that you're willing to work with. Because already, before you obviously decide whether you want to do a PhD, you already have a, an area of interest that you're maybe already thinking about doing your research into, or maybe you're already working that area anyway, and you just want to enhance it or further it or understand better about it to essentially become one of the world experts in what you're doing or in that field. Um, so reaching out to a potential supervisor that you think you might be able to work with will give you so uh, such a huge advantage because they, they could be on a panel of your interview. Also, they could give you tips and tricks in terms of finding funding because obviously finding funding is such an important aspect of, you know, your PhD process because, you know, um, it's, well, I mean, except you're rich. If you're rich, obviously you don't need funding or you don't need to find funding and you can fund yourself, but most people, do require funding um, because you have tuition fees you have to pay for and obviously um, you have um, maintenance to like obviously look after yourself pay for rent or whatever you know all those kind of all those things and also even course materials as well that's also something that you might be looking to if you're doing maybe an art subject or maybe you're doing maybe psychology and you it requires you to maybe you know take surveys you want to actually maybe give people maybe like you know vouchers for obviously taking the surveys or like I don't know whatever it may be or if you're doing the science research you might require you know certain things you know grants and all of that to be able to actually buy resources for those experiments that you want to you know conduct so it's so important to obviously reach out to a supervisor because they may be able to guide you and tell you you know maybe this is the right direction or they may be even able to find partners within maybe industries or companies that could be able to fund you so it's so important to reach out to supervisors that you think that you may want to be able to work with essentially they could be the best guide that you could ever have but obviously this is not an essential part of the application process but it's one of the advices that I think is very key because when you're doing a PhD, you're going to be delving into this area of research for four years with the same supervisor. So it's very important to ensure that you're working with, you know, in an environment or with a supervisor that has your best interests aligned or you have, you know, very similar, you know, work habits and stuff. So my advice for you is to always reach out to past and present students of that supervisor to essentially um, understand maybe, you know, their way of working, to reach out to a past or present student because they'll be able to tell you about maybe if you're working in a lab, a lab, the lab dynamics, you know, the habits of the supervisor, and then you can basically assess whether this is a supervisor you actually want to work with. People, some people's supervisors are like micromanagers, some people's supervisors kind of let you do your own thing, some supervisors are like in between, you know, they don't mind either, it's all kind of down to you. So you need to essentially find out and, you know, assess whether the supervisor that you want to work with is actually the most ideal supervisor for you because you're going to be stuck with them for at least three years. And a PhD is a marathon, not a sprint. And it's something that requires the support of various different aspects. And having a ground, concrete supervisor that you can count on, you can rely on, is so important. My third advice is ensuring that you basically prepare all your application material ahead of time. So make sure your CV is ready, make sure it's updated, make sure you don't include things that are not relevant. I know an academic CV can be as long as possible, you can have five pages, six pages, but make sure all the information within the academic CV is all relevant to what you wanna do. 
because you have this opportunity unlike you know doing an undergraduate degree um submitting through UCAS where you only submit one application and it's the same personal statement that you send to all of it you have this opportunity to basically tailor every single application to what you know what you're applying to so why not make use of it so ensure that your CV and personal statements are all tailored to what you're applying to you and make sure it's all up to date. And also make sure you don't include things that you're not willing to talk about within your, you know, your, your personal statement, because those are things that may pop up during the interview. And also ensuring that you prepare that material ahead of time means that, you know, if you need to tweak or change things, or if maybe the application portal is slightly different from what you expected, you can break that down, you can add things, adjust things, you know, very easily. So it's just so important to prepare that material ahead of time. My fourth tip is ensure that you've informed all your references ahead of time that you're going to be using them as a reference for your application because references are so important and they can make or break your application so informing them ahead of time ensures that they're able to prepare you know a letter for you ahead of time so once you apply you, they can basically send that off straight away and there's no delay in your application because sometimes with some application at least for Cambridge if your reference is not submitted before the deadline your application is completely dead and you basically you know at least nowadays it's free you know to apply so there's no application fee but before that will be quite detrimental to you because you've spent that money to apply so always have at least three referees that you can reach out to for all your applications. So you can mix and, you know, change them depending on, you know, what you're applying for. Maybe this person is more suited or tailored to that application that you're making there because their subject area is very close, you know, so they can, they can actually talk about you and your experience within that subject area a lot better. So you just always have at least three. Usually most applications only requires two. So do that ahead of time. So my last piece of advice for you guys is to basically believe in yourself and take that giant leap of faith and just apply don't delay just do it if you feel and believe that you know the PhD is the right direction for you just apply apply to places that you think that you may not be able to get into like Cambridge University a lot of people think they can't get into Cambridge and you'd be surprised you can if you believe in yourself you have the right attitude you know you can get in here also just reach out like i said reach out to supervisors they are so important because they can also help you you know in terms of like you know guiding you with maybe if you have to write a, pr a proposal for your application they can help you with that so make sure you do all these things all these little bits and things that you do could make such a huge difference to the whole application experience and the whole application process Make use of all the assistance that you have, whether it's resources within your university in terms of, you know, um, career advisors, applications advisors, because they can essentially look over your CV and your personal statement. So make use of all those resources that are available to you um, and just apply, just apply. Feel the fear and do it anyway, honestly. That's one of the best advices I ever, you know, got. Because what is the worst that could happen? You could get rejected. There's no shame in it. You know, people fail all the time, you know? You get rejected, it's a learning process. You might not be able to get the PhD this year, but you know, apply again next year and you'll be able to get it, you know? It's all about learning, all about improving. So just apply, but guys, um, if you've enjoyed this video, please like it. Um, make sure you subscribe to my channel, press that notification bell and comment down below. I want to see some more engagement, some more interactions. If you have any questions, feel free to put that in the comment below and I'll be happy to answer it. But guys, I wish you all the best um, during this whole application period. I know that um, you're going to succeed as long as you believe in yourself and you're confident in your knowledge and abilities, you are going to do well. But guys, also just a reminder that I have so many resources on my channel about, you know, doing a PhD or also that whole application process from, you know, writer research proposal, CVs, personal statements, um, interview techniques to presenting an interview as well. All of them are right there in, um, on my, on my page. Um, I think I have, I've made some playlists on them. Um, so make sure you check them out um, and they can basically guide you in terms of how to write a CV or personal statement. But anyway, that's it for me. I hope you have a lovely day. Good luck, all the best. 
dream big and keep being inspired before i forget just keep being inspired and dream big and i'll see you guys in the next video take care and goodbye